The Kip Sankofa Charter School was developed to serve educationally underserved middle school students. Upfront reporter Mary Kay sat with Principal Dr. Josephine Mayfield to find out how she prepares her students for the future. Hi, my name is Mary Kay and I'm here today at Sankofa Charter School which is actually underneath the new leadership of Dr. Josephine Mayfield. Today I'll be talking to her a little bit about her background and what she's trying to do to increase the enrollment here at Sankofa. Now talking about Sankofa, could you please tell me the meaning of the word and the special, the special meaning behind it? Well, the San Sankofa is a, a mythic bird, um, so it's not a real bird. Um, and what, it's, what the meaning behind it is, you'll see a bird with an egg in its mouth. The bird is walking forward, but it's looking back. And the message is, it's never too late to go back and get what you forgot, which means it's never too late to remember your past because your past makes your present which makes your future. And so in order for you to really know who you are, you have to step back and see where you've been. And sometimes that also means to look at your history. You know, where did you come from? What line of richness did you come from? Because that sh should help shape who you are. And could you tell me a little bit about Sankofa's curriculum? Our curriculum is basically the, um, the New York State curriculum. Um, we offer math, science, English, the regular courses. Um, one of the pieces that I'm looking at is, you know, because Sankofa has that African um, tone, I guess you could say, um, I want to bring Swahili. I want the students to learn Swahili. And I want to do it in an atmosphere of an after-school club. So this way they're not, because I'm really focusing on just getting through the, um, the New York State standards and making sure that the assessments are past the benchmark level. So I wanted to offer this as a little side thing in the afternoon because I have some friends who speak Swahili and drumming and all of that. So, so we're still keeping the flavor of, of Africa, but we're just bringing it down to an after school club because I want to make sure that the, the kids don't forget that we're here for our academics first and then the extra stuff comes in the afternoon after school hours. Um, what grades does Sankofa offer education to? Grades five through eight. And are the school, is the school year longer? Are the school days longer? The school year and the school days are longer, but not as long as they used to be. It was, it used to be 10 hour days. Yeah. This year we're down, we're, we've shortened it to nine to four. And um, we start August 13th through June 25th, I believe it is. So we're doing 200 days instead of 188. So we just got an, about three, two weeks more than um, the Buffalo Public Schools. And what do you think Sankofa has that makes it stand out from, say, other private or public schools in Buffalo? What really says, hey, I want to send my child here? Um, I think we got a great staff. Um, the staff, our goals for the students, that we care, um, that we want to see students succeed. I, I, you know, I think it's genuine. It's not about what we can get, but it's about how we can help students and how we can bring them. You know, I'm getting teary-eyed because I had a family that came from um, the South, and they didn't have any clothes. Um, they had a bad situation where they were, so they came to Buffalo with just what they had on their backs. And so the grandmother had said um, that they couldn't come to school because they didn't have clothes, and they didn't have money to buy clothes, and they couldn't get school supplies. And I said, we can't do that. They have to come to school. So I sent the parent liaison over there and I said, they got to come to school, they got to come. So um, we found some money to get them clothing, to get them school supplies, to get them a uniform, to get them sneakers, to make them feel like they're like everybody else so that they would fit in. And they came Monday. Mm -hmm. It was great. So, so I said, that's my adopted family. Because I mean, to just talk to them and, and the one who's in fifth grade, you know, he smiles and he lights up a room. You know, you just want to hug him. So it's like, I said, no, because I know that when they were in the South, that their skills were slow, you know, mm -hmm. that they, they were behind academically. And so I said, you know, they are up here for an opportunity. They have to get an education because this is the only way up. This is the only way up for them, you know. And they don't know, you know, when you're poor, you don't know you're poor because everybody else is poor. But when you start seeing that everybody else is getting and you're not getting, then you start feeling like you're different from them, you know, and then you feel that, well, maybe they're talking about me, they don't see me the same, 
And I said, uh, we can't do that. I, I, if I had to go in my pocket to get those kids here, I would have done that, mm -hmm. you know? So it was like, no, they have to come to school. And so um, I sent the social worker, and I think that's one of the other good things that we have. I have a social worker, too, and a parent liaison. So I said, you guys have got to talk to the parents. You got to get the mother in here so that she understands that it's important for her not to take these kids out of school. They can't go traipsing around, you know, going to another state or whatever. This has got to be it for the kids. Now, if she wants to leave, she can go ahead, but the kids have got to stay in school mm -hmm. because she's holding them back. And they're too young to know that when they get into ninth grade, they can't read, mm -hmm. you know? So this is why it's so important. And I, and I think because we, we really have that care factor. I mean, when my parent liaison comes in and she's like, Dr. Mayfield, I know. I know you're going to get upset, and then she'll show me uh, someone's handwriting who's in fifth grade, and it looks like they're in first grade. And I'm saying, why is this? You know, why is this? Did the kid not go to school? Because if he can't write, he can't read, you know? And then that's like a, that perpetual cycle just continues. So, um, so I get, I get, you see, I get very passionate because, I mean, I'm looking at myself, and I started off probably just like these kids, but not realizing it, you know? I mean, because my mother was poor. We were on welfare. And it was like, but in my mind, I kept thinking, I could be just like everybody else. And that's where I want to get these kids to go. I want them to think that the sky's the limit. We have everything for them. All they have to do is just open up their minds and step in. You know, so it's, it's, not, it's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. You know, all they have to do is come to school. The teachers are giving you the information that you need. All you have to do is just show up mm -hmm. and take it, you know. So that's what we're working on now. I, I remember Monday, I was telling them, I said, okay, now, so... How many days do we come to school? How many days do we come to? And they're saying, every day. I said, every day. What are those days? And I said, name them for me. And they were naming them. I said, OK, so that means there's Saturdays and Sundays do we come to school? No. OK, so then you should be coming to school. How many days? Five. That's right. So, Because I want them to understand the importance of coming to school every day. Because when you miss a day, you miss like two days. Because now you've got to play catch up. You know. So I'm trying to emphasize, come to school. Come to school. You have to be here to learn. And the teachers are all, we're all on the same page this year. So it's just a great thing. And right now, what's like your student enrollment? How many students do you have? I here? believe we have close to 200. Wow. We're, we're shooting for 220. Um, we're trying to expand our fifth grade classes, our fifth grade session, sections. We have two. We want to get another, a third one. And our seventh grade section, we want to get a third one. So we have three sections of sixth grade right now and three sections of eighth grade. Okay. And a parent came in today for her daughter for eighth grade. And I was like, you got any fifth graders? <laughs> <laughs> she said, well, I'll take a couple of applications and pass them out. So I said, okay, that's good enough. That's great. So it's, it's just been, this has been a great experience. Your behavior code, could you please explain, um, you, I saw that you have a different behavior code from other schools in your, your brochure. Could you please explain that a little bit for me? Well, I don't, I don't know if we even implement that behavior code because it's basically, we talk to the students about what we expect from them. And then we show them that this is what we expect from you. So our expectations are up to here. So I don't think we have, you know, the code is in terms of if they're not prepared, that those kinds of things you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Because we don't, yeah, um, it's kind of early in the game. We haven't started using that yet. Because usually what happens is teachers talk to the students about their behavior. And the students who don't comply, usually they'll call the parent, they'll talk to the parent or either they'll threaten to talk to the parent, and that usually resolves the problem. And if it gets too outrageous, then the our dean of students, Mr. Wynn, steps in, and so the problems are resolved. And how can parents or students find out about Sankofa? They can just drive up here to Central <laughs> Park Plaza and come on in, or, <laughs> or they can call 446-5708. 446-5708. Okay, great. And is there anything else that you would like to add about the school that I haven't hit on? Just that Sankofa is going to be a school that people are going to be talking about. You know, this is our first year that I'm here, mm -hmm. and um, and I, I feel really positive about it. And I and I and I'm hearing a lot of positive things so far. And it's only day four, mm -hmm. so um, so I'm thinking. You know, I've been telling the teachers we're going to put Sankofa on the map. You know, we're going to get the, our scores up so that, you know, we're going to be a school that, to be reckoned with. You know, folks are going to be comparing us to the suburban schools because we're going to have our expectations just that good. You know, and I told the teachers, you don't stop. You don't stop. Okay, well, thank you for joining us today, Dr. Mayfield. My pleasure. Thank you.